Hello everybody, it's been a while since I've done last video. So winter has arrived in Norway and the conditions are not very good for riding normal bike. So I decided to go for the next project, which is making an electrical fat bike. I don't know if you are aware of what type of bike it is, but uh, this is the one with these fat tires. Here you can see the example of it. Yeah. So as you can see, these are huge. Yeah. And dimension of these tires, wheels actually, is 26. And diameter around 4.8 inch. So what I will be doing today We'll be installing this TSDZ2 or so called Tonshang motor. And here you can see all the parts of this motor more or less. This is like a special version for fat bikes with wider crank. So this motor is around 100 mm left. Sorry, the crank, not the motor. Uh, here you can see all the components of the system, like um, controller, thumb throttle, speed sensor, display, uh, some screws and crank arms. So, what special is this with this motor is that it comes with torque sensor. So, which is much more preferable for riding in winter conditions. This gives you a lot of you know, control over the motor. In my opinion, it's way better than this Bafang motor, which you can see here. This is nice, very fast, but actually for winter it's a little bit too powerful. Here you can see also the uh, lightning set I will be installing on this fun bike. I get it together with the bike. And <laughs> the price for it was really small. Around four and a half thousand crores for whole set, including the stud tires. Yeah. So you can find really good offers on Finn, you know. Yeah. So just grab it. Buy it for yourself and do something with it. Interesting. Alright. What we will do now is to dismantle the crank. Uh, the mod bike is already cleaned up. So now will be the fun part of the job installing everything together. So, I have unpacked the motor and uh, you can see it's put into the bike. You can try to fit up. So, but uh, as you can see, maybe I'll show you this now. Not only for these motion motors, you have a bracket locking the motor to the frame. Uh, you see the hole for the screw and normally it goes through this opening here in the frame. Depends on the frame, of course. But the problem here is that for the fat bikes, and this bracket is slightly offset from the center. Yeah, so I have to prepare a custom-made bracket. Norm normally you have this element coming with the motor but it fits perfectly only for the smaller flames 
here in this case for the fat bag is too short. So what I'll be doing, we make a custom made bracket using this steel profile. So I just need to cut it in proper length and drill the hole, which will match the one here. So thanks to this bracket, the motor will be secured in place uh, and it will not rotate during operation uh, like this. Yeah. So that's the main purpose of this locking bracket. Okay, so <laughs> let's do some cutting now. Okay. The grinder is prepared, you can see it here, the bracket as well, so a markup of the cutting lines. So now is the time to cut this piece of metal and make sure it fits. Install the bracket in place. It looks quite nice. Yeah. So the alignment is very good now. You can see this from different perspectives. I tighten all the screws. The motor is sitting inside, you know, clamped very so firmly to the frame uh, fortunately it's not the black color but this is stainless steel so will not rust uh, visible that it is like you know homemade but I prefer this bracket solution than pressing the motor against the frame here that's another way of securing the motor, but this one is way better. Uh, there is no rebound movement back and forth when you are cycling, so this will be very good. Okay, so I'll put all the screws now, and then putting speed sensor controls okay <laughs> it's never easy <laughs> installing these motors yeah. if you can see you know, the motor comes with this how to say the... it's not shim it's like a small pipe element which is restraining the movement of this bracket like in this direction but the problem is it's too short, so I need to shim it. Plan is to use something like this. Oh, it's a little bit too thick. Maybe you can see it better here. So what I will do now will be like grind off a little bit of this aluminium element. Then it will fit perfectly. All right. So the spacers are grinded off. So I managed to get exact length of these pieces. So there won't be any gap between the black bracket and the spacer. So I just need to put now you know, this 
Loctite glue on the pint, how to call it. Here, anyway, on the grooves of the pin, you know. And then I will lock it in place with this ring. This is very handy, prevents you know loosening up of the rings and all other screws. I really recommend it. Probably remember that uh, I was always installing the battery uh, of the buffer motor. Here is the same thing. We have the same tray, I'll secure it in place with two screws and this uh, water bottle holders. I need to do this to measure the length of the cables. I don't want to have any excessive uh, cables here. Wandering around this area when I'm pedaling. So, I'll make a cut somewhere here. Install this uh, display panel now, just to check if it fits. And we will do. I can do actually. Motor test. It's a time to check, you know, if this motor works as it should. Yeah. All the cabling is connected, the sensor is as well. It's not the final one, I will change to another type. You can see the battery connection. I use this plastic wrap. To gather the cables together. Okay, so let's power up. Okay, it looks like everything works. Yeah. 
Yeah. I will set the motor later on. Test the gas throttle. I hope it will work, but sometimes I heard that you need to pedal in order to check if it's working. Ah, but it works. Not bad. No errors for the time being. Good, very good. Alright folks, job is completed. I'll be changing maybe something when I receive all the parts, like new speed sensor. But for the time being, that's all. So all the lights are installed. Handlebars, etc. etc. Here you can see the solution of the battery replacement. Backlight. So I integrated the cable from the backlight and the front one under this plastic wrap. Looks very decent. I'll show you this in operation. So by pressing this button, turn on the light, you can steer the lightness. Uh, getting brighter and brighter with every push. If I turn off the light then you can see it better. The smaller button turns on the backlight. Oh, it's quite bright, as you can see. Two thousand lumens, probably. Okay. Unfortunately, the weather is really bad, raining all day, so I cannot test it today. What a shame. I'll try to do this tomorrow. So, thanks for watching. There will be some next bike coming in for conversion. So, I hope this video was interesting for you. And I recommend to visit my webpage on Facebook. You can see a lot of interesting builds there. So, if you are interested, just contact me. See you.